Whenever stern fathers convey affection for their children, they mostly abandon gentle expressions and temperate words. Instead, they assume solemn appearances and deliver words of admonishment. This is not so unlike the way earnest instructions were dispensed by my father, Mr. Song Shun Ren. In his letters, guidances and encouragements were articulated with candor and urgency. From the age of 16, when I traveled to Britain for education, to the age of 48, when my father passed away. In a span of 32 years, his letters amount to more than a thousand. His supervisions and promptings were never unconsidered. Only at my current age of 60 can I now appreciate the depths of his concerns concealed in the fine details of his writings. In the 72nd year of the Republic, 1983, I received the bachelor degree from University College London and went on to study at the Architectural Association School of Architecture. Sometime in late February, the 75th year of the Republic, 1986, I implored my father to write a pair of calligraphy couplets for me. I had already been given two pieces of calligraphy by my father, a piece written on a fan and another piece written on a horizontal scroll. To acquire an additional format was cause for gratification. Calligraphy was a self-indulgent pleasure for my father. He was not a professional calligrapher, yet he attained a unique individualism in his calligraphic expression. According to his own scrutiny, his calligraphy was derived from the works of Wang Shizi, 303 to 361, Zhao Mengfu, 1254 to 1322, Dong Qichang, 1555 to 1636, Tang Bohu, 1470 to 1524, and others, attaining the delight of lightness and vigor. On 17th March, in the 72nd year of the Republic, 1983, I received a letter from my father. It reads, I am going to write the pair of couplets during the holidays near the end of this month. Then it will be sent for mounting immediately. When it is done, it will roughly coincide with your birthday. According to the sexagenary cycle, we are in Ping Yin year, which happens to be your zodiac year, the year of the tiger. It is particularly meaningful for me to write this pair of couplets to motivate you. The words of the couplets are, my son Kong studies and practices architecture which synthesizes science and art into one entity. This was written as an encouragement. And though the hills and rivers in the heart to master the discipline of science and art, emulate the vigor and will of the virtuous to gain the comportment of genuineness. March of Ping Yin Year Xunlun. 
I am approaching 77 this year. Every 76 years, Haley's Comet passes over the Earth once. Last time it passed over was 1910, precisely the year I was born. Writing the couplets this year, Haley's Comet passes over me again for the second time. To encounter Haley's Comet twice in a life can be considered remarkable, worthy of remembrance. Of course, it is not possible to come across it the third time round. I hope you can see it again. By then, you will be a hundred. In view of our current advancements in science and medicine, as long as you take good care of yourself, pay attention to your health all the time. It should be achievable. Fine years had drifted by and twilight was closing. He could only covet his son's longevity. On 1st April in the same year, my father wrote another letter to describe experimenting with sprinkled gold paper and white paper. He also mentioned asking Uncle Chen Jiezi, a painter friend, to decorate the couplets with paintings. One could discern the attentiveness lavished on this task. The letter reads, My original intention was to write on sprinkled gold paper. However, I realized that black ink characters on light yellow paper with sprinkling of gold specks did not compare well with black ink characters on white paper. The latter has the clarity of black upon white. The characters are effortlessly intelligible at a glance. Hence, I decided to write on white paper. But to avoid being too plain, I have obtained the consent of Uncle Chen Jiezi that I will mail him the couplets and he will paint on them either colored orchids or prunus so that they will be more archaic and visually appealing. He will then mail them back to Hong Kong for mounting. In little time, the painted couplets by Uncle Chen Jiezi were mailed back to Hong Kong. My father was not happy with them. He decided to ask his intimate friend, Aunt Zhou Lianxia, who was living in America, to paint them instead. Aunt Zhou Lianxia, 1909-2000, Hao Guo Chuanzi, native of Jian, Jiangxi province. Her virtuosities in poetry, Ci lyrics, calligraphy and paintings are venerated in mainland China and overseas. My father's letter of 27th April reads, The calligraphy couplets I wrote were mailed to Zhou Lianxia in America yesterday. She can thus paint vermilion bamboo on them. Bamboo is categorized as one of the four plants known as the four gentlemen, prunus, orchid, bamboo, and chrysanthemum. This is because bamboo is considered to possess humility and high integrity. In Chinese painting, bamboo is mostly colored in green or black, as in ink bamboo. Painting of vermilion bamboo was first executed by Su Dongpo, also known as Su Si, 1037 to 1101. At one time, he was in the Imperial Examination Hall and totally bored. By chance, he used some cinnabar material with his brush and painted vermilion bamboo. 
This began the fashion of painting vermilion bamboo. Actually, according to ancient texts, there were a few acres of vermilion bamboo in Xishan of Jianjing. Many literati followed Su Dongpo to paint vermilion bamboo. In our house, there is a painting of vermilion bamboo by Pu Xingyu, also known as Pu Ru, 1896 to 1963. I suggested to Zhou Lianxia not to use light color. She can directly apply vermilion color to paint onto the empty spaces of the couplets. It will look appealing and not too plain. As for Zhou Lianxia's mastery of classical literature, be it poetry, zi lyrics or prose, it is no longer possible to find a second woman of her profound standard across mainland China and Taiwan today. Regarding her female figure paintings, the beauty conveyed by their facial outlines is unrivaled in history even comparing to the works by Lei Qing figure painters such as Fei Xiaolou, Gan Qixiang, or the contemporary painters such as Pu Xingyu, Zhang Daqian. I asked her not to overpaint. A few simple strokes would be elegant and charming enough. So I anticipate when the couplets arrive some days from now, one will definitely not be disappointed. The two couplets from Taiwan were quite ludicrous. He first employed a very light red, then he realized it was inappropriate. He could not wait for the water to dry thoroughly, and he immediately plunged the darker vermilion onto the paper. The result was, wherever the vermilion brush stroked, the color spread, the whole paper was spoiled and messed. It was unsightly. Fortunately, my calligraphy is not some fine work of art in the first place. I promptly wrote another pair in that moment. If these were calligraphic works by famous artists and he was asked to embellish them, one would only be left wailing tearfully. I have kept this pair of couplets and I will show you in the future. You will find this comical. Therefore, experience is very important. He is inexperienced with the underlay of light color, but he is brilliant in landscape and figure paintings. Indeed, he is particularly outstanding in figure paintings. There's a pertinent colloquial saying, an encyclopedia missing a corner. Although my father claimed he kept the couplets, I have never seen them. They must be torn and discarded long ago. For the pair of couplets that were sent to America, should they be embellished with vermilion bamboo or prunus and bamboo or the four gentlemen of prunus, orchid, bamboo and chrysanthemum? My father, my mother, and Aunt Zolianxia repeatedly discussed the matter. In my father's letter dated 5th May, he wrote, Zolianxia has already received the pair of couplets. She thinks just painting vermilion bamboo is too simplistic. She advocates painting the four gentlemen prunus, orchid, bamboo, and chrysanthemum. Your mother also thinks that bamboo has been customarily referred by ordinary people as someone who cultivates a facade but is devoid of practicality. It is wholly inappropriate. The four gentlemen are more preferable. Hence, I am determined to ask her to paint the four gentlemen. I anticipate the result this time will be most satisfactory. However, the letter dated 27th May reads, 
The pair of couplets entrusted to Zhou Lianxia to be painted are not back yet. When I first delivered them to her, I suggested that she could paint vermilion bamboo or the unworldly duel of prunus and bamboo. A part prunus, a part bamboo. Chinese classical literature refers to their pairing together as the unworldly duel of prunus and bamboo because they are both regarded as exceedingly lofty in character. However, she later suggested over the phone that she would paint the four gentlemen of prunus, orchid, bamboo and chrysanthemum. But four days ago, when I called to hasten her, she changed her mind once more. She believed the unworldly duel of prunus and bamboo would be more straightforward. According to her, it would be finished very soon. Just got to wait for them to be returned and then find out the outcome. I guess they should be pretty good. As I am writing this letter, a student of Zhou Lianxia, Mrs. Xu, whom you saw a few years ago, suddenly came to deliver the pair of couplets that Zhou Lianxia mailed her with instructions to pass on to me. I opened the package and it was truly well painted. She had indeed painted the unworldly duel of prunus and bamboo. Furthermore, it is a diptych. A diptych means that the paintings on the two couplets join together to become one. Therefore, the vermilion bamboo was painted from the lower right of the left couplet, lower scroll, to the left of the right couplet, upper scroll. The stem of the prunus was painted from the upper right corner of the right couplet, upper scroll, to the upper right corner of the left couplet, lower scroll. They are very elegant. When they are mounted in the future, despite the silk border, it will still be possible to identify these paintings in the manner of a diptych. I think the singular color of vermilion for prunus and bamboo is far better than the addition of green orchid and yellow chrysanthemum. If the services have too many colors, the beauty of simplicity will be lost. For you to gain the thrill of seeing them first, I will seal the pair of couplets in a circular tube and send them to you. After you have seen them, send them back to the office by registered airmail and tell me your preference of mounting them as scrolls or in frames. The advantage of scrolls is that they are easy to carry and they can be hung anywhere. But as time goes by, it is inevitable that they will be affected by dust and air. The surfaces of the couplets will be dirty and change color. Framing them is a long-term solution, like the pair of couplets in regular script by Pu Xingyu in the house. The surfaces of the couplets can be protected for a long time. However, they will be difficult to pack and send in the future. When you no longer want to hang them, they are inconvenient to store. You can quickly decide. Aunt Zhou Lianxia eventually settled to paint prunus and bamboo after numerous back and forth considerations. It is obvious this was undertaken with gravity. My father's letter dated 2nd June reads, Near the roots of the bamboo, Zhou Lianxia painted a few fresh sprouts. This is allusion to the poem, Fresh sprouts have grown into bamboo by the hall. Green bamboo swiftly gives birth to sprouts anew. She is giving early compliments to the arrival of children and grandchildren, and this is her blessing and felicitation. I have already thanked her for that. Only then I realized that the painting of prunus and bamboo by Aunt Zhou Lianxia had introduced deeper illusion beyond.
In my father's letter dated 9th June, he discussed extensively the sealed impressions on the couplets. He wrote, You wrote to inquire about the two sealed impressions. The impression on the right couplet, upper scroll, was made by a square stone seal. It was engraved by Zhao Heqing at my request. The sentence was derived from the words of a Ci poet in the Song Dynasty, 960 to 1279. I have dispensed futile labor to become a lyric poet. The impression on the left couplet is chivalrous bearing and Zen heart. This is an ivory seal your great-grandfather brought to Shanghai from his posting in Fujian province. He also brought along a rectangular ivory seal carved with these characters. Prunus is my confidant and bamboo is my tutor. These two ivory seals are already a hundred and some dozen years old. Coincidentally, this is a painting of Brunus and bamboo. After it is mounted, if there is sufficient space at the silk border, the seal, Prunus is my confidant and bamboo is my tutor, can be impressed. If it is too tight, then it will not be impressed. Zhou Liansha had put in a lot of thoughts to paint the Prunus and bamboo. As you are a young man, she especially painted yew upright bamboo that was full of vigor. For Prunus, she too avoided twisted branch and aged stem. Instead, she painted sparse shadows and horizontal postures. The comportment of these new branches thrive gracefully. Moreover, she painted fresh sprouts which can be considered her blessing and felicitation. In her letter, she recalled she had painted diptych works with six scrolls and eight scrolls. But this was her first attempt at diptych work with two scrolls. However, she did not impress her seal. It seemed too informal. I therefore requested that she should make remedy by impressing a small seal to be located somewhere appropriate to demonstrate solemnity. She will be coming to Hong Kong in July and August. She will bring a seal to add on its impression. When parents write to children, they do not impress seals with their surnames nor original names. By custom, only seals engraved with zi or hao are used. Nonetheless, I do not have a proper zi or hao. For the names of Xinlen, Xing'an, Yuli, they are all temporary nom de plume for amusement. They are not genuine zi nor hao. Since Xinlen is the only standard name, and I do not have a seal with just the characters Xinlen, so I use the playful seal of chivalrous bearing and Zen heart. The horizontal scroll I wrote for you some years ago was impressed with the seal, seal of Song Xunlun. It was out of expediency and it should not be regarded as correct form. The seal, chivalrous bearing and Zen heart mentioned in the letter is a stone seal. It was erroneously recalled as an ivory seal. The seal, Prunus is my confidant and Bamboo is my tutor, is a two-sided ivory seal. The other side has the engraved characters, Ci lyrics and prose by scholar Sung. Both seals were used by my great-grandfather 
the Honorable Song Zihe, original name Zun Wang. For these seals to remain in the possession of his descendants has not been an easy feat. The seal I have dispensed futile labor to become a lyric poet was engraved by Uncle Zhao He Qin. Uncle Zhao He Qin, 1894-1971, Zi Xing Bu, Hao Tie Chao, and Zhang Hui Lao Ren in his old age. His studio names were Ne Ci Xuan and Tao Zhen Lou. He was a native of Yingxian, Zhejiang province. He was the grandnephew of Zhao Suru, 1874 to 1945, and inherited an eminent artistic lineage. He was accomplished in calligraphy, painting, and distinguished in seal engraving. The engraved inscription on the side of the seal reads, Xunren, my elder brother, a poet of Ci lyrics, asked me to engrave a sentence by Zhu Changchun, November of Bing Wu year, He Qing. Ping Wu year is the 55th year of the Republic, 1966. The sentence, I have dispensed futile labor to become a lyric poet, was derived from the poem, The Grave of Commander Cai, by Wen Ting Yun, 812-870, of the Tang Dynasty, 618-907. The poem reads, Ancient grave crumbles by wildflowers in spring. Commander's spirit is said to have reborn. Adoration of talent is much less than before. Don't dispense futile labor to be a lyric poet. Zhu Changchun, 1857 to 1931, a distinguished Ci poet and a close friend of my great grandfather, the Honorable Song Zihe composed his final Ci lyric to the tune Zhe Gu Tian before passing away. It reads, Loyalty and filial piety, how scant have I braced! Solaces from brothers, those years no more. In my eyes, my son, is this right or is this wrong? After my death, my wife, is this enmity or is this care? Affairs but shadows, life as water and cloud. I have dispensed futile labor to become a lyric poet. Save this human world for grief only. Unlink the ties from past karma. For my father to ask Uncle Zhao He Qing to engrave the sentence, I have dispensed futile labor to become a lyric poet. His lamentations on life must be 
Vietnam. The horizontal scroll by my father mentioned in the letter was executed in the 68th year of the Republic, 1979. Under the signature, there is only the seal impression passing on knowledge. It was erroneously recalled to be the seal of Sung Shun Ren. The text on the horizontal scroll reads, Enhance your ability and learning. Abet by humility and astuteness. If great endeavor is attained by good fortune, it is admittedly cause for satisfaction. If not, these qualities are suffice to lead a settled life. Sun Kong, be encouraged. March in Zhi Wei Year, Xun Ren. I was 17 then. My father wrote this instruction from the depths of his heart. After Aunt Zhou Lianxia painted the prunus and the bamboo, in the beginning, she might have concern about impressing her seal. Later on, she did not manage to fix the seal impression neither. She visited Hong Kong in July and August 1986 one might conjecture that she forgot to bring her seal. A few years later, because of the looming takeover of Hong Kong by mainland China, my father relocated to Bangkok. Aunt Zhou Lianxia continued to stay in America, and that was the end of finding an opportunity to affix her seal. It is uncertain when the seal carved with the palindrome phrase like ridge, like hill, was impressed on the right couplet, upper scroll. The seal like ridge, like hill was engraved by Feng Mingtang, 1741 to 1806. In the 75th year of the Republic, 1986, I acquired the seal from Sydney Arrow Moss Limited, a Chinese antique shop in London. My father inscribed the title slip and the interior of the brocade box. The words in the interior are Feng Ming Chang, Zi Bo Chou, Hao Yu San, native of Qingzhou. He attended the Jing Si degree in the 43rd year of the Qianlong reign. He excelled in seal engraving, poetry, and painting. His engravings were vigorous, deep, and resonant. This seal, with the characters, like Ridge, like Hill, was acquired by Xu Kang in London in 1986. It was a fortuitous encounter with epigraph. On the side of the Like Ridge, Like Hill seal, there is an engraved inscription with these words. On 3rd July, in the autumn of Wu Shu year, I imitated the seals carved in the Han Dynasty. This was engraved in Xiao Luo Fo Cao Tang, Feng Ming Chang.
This seal was engraved in July of Wu Shu year. It is the equivalent of the 43rd year of the Qianlong reign, 1778. In spring that year, Fu Mingchang took the imperial examination and attained his Jing Si degree and was ranked second class number 42nd. He was 32 years of age at the height of his scholarly achievements and carved this seal to mark the moment in a mood of elation. The phrase, like rich, like hill, on the seal was intended to be used for self-motivation and self-reflection by Feng Mingchang. My father affixed this seal impression on the couplet. His expectation was clearly apparent. Seals by Feng Mingchang are very rare. In the biographies of Cantonese seal engravers compiled by Mr. Ma Guoquan, two seals are documented. One is like ridge, like hill. The other is ancient wood lying across the wilderness. These may be the only two extant seals by Feng Mingchang. The format of calligraphy couplets started in the Ming Dynasty and flourished in the Qing Dynasty. Pictorial embellishment on couplets by eminent artists is rare indeed. This painting is also the only pictorial work on a pair of couplets by Aunt Zhou Lianxia. The seal impressions on the couplets compose an extraordinary spectacle. There's a seal impression with a phrase for self-reflection from my father. There's a seal impression with a phrase for self-scrutiny from my great-grandfather. There's a seal impression with a phrase for self-commitment from a virtuous forefather, connecting each other through a stretch of 200 years. I have let the years start by in futility, unable to even realize a fraction of my father's teachings, hanging the pair of couplets in the room. What can I tell my father?